There was a stat, I think it's 80% of American cinema made before 1930 is, is gone. I saw video games making the same mistakes that film was making. To me, that was scary. That's when I really got into the idea of actually tracking down and documenting video games. It's just been my cause since then. I'm Frank Zavaldi. I'm the founder of the Video Game History Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to preserving the history of video games. When I was a kid, we all had Nintendos, because that's just what you did. I got my first computer, which was 1998. Along with that computer was my first access to the internet. I kind of looked up the things that I was maybe a little bit nostalgic for, and in my case, that was Nintendo games I used to play. There were people out there who were taking these games and making sure that they weren't forgotten, that the actual like digital bits inside the cartridge were actually extracted and, and put in a safe place. For video games, we can talk about them in, in much more substantial and interesting ways if we have access to ephemeral material that you need to be able to access things like, you know, magazines. That's how you actually understand the time and place of the game. And when I discovered that there were communities of people who were archiving these games, I just really got into it. Go away. <laughs> What's up, man? How's it going? Good. Mike Micah is an old friend of mine. Someone else who very early on recognized that, wait, this stuff's actually important. Just kind of a like-minded person. I dare you. Do you want to open it and take a whiff? Oh, is this a challenge? This came out of the landfill where the Atari games were buried. So is this what it smelled like when you were there? It's, yes. And that smell was in my nose for two weeks, and I'm stepping back because I can't. I'll throw up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with it, but that is a gross smell. Frank and what he does, I, I do often refer to it as the Lord's work because he's relentless in his pursuit of finding these, these games and everything related to them. Oh my God. <laughs> if we can get the foundation to spearhead the way you should properly archive games and game projects, that will solve so many problems going forward. And for game preservation, that's one of the biggest issues for me. I started this collection in 2003 when no one cared about this stuff. There were video game collectors and some of them were collecting magazines here and there, but it wasn't really like a pursuit. I got in early when it was really easy. God, these smell so awful too. All right, so this stuff, so this is where in North Dakota is Carmen San Diego. So Carmen San Diego, of course, was a popular series of computer games, not to mention a couple TV shows. Hello and welcome to Acme. I'm the chief. In the earliest, earliest days of this franchise, uh, they were trying to figure out what to do with it. Like they had a couple games and they ended up making this one really particular Carmen San Diego game. Up until very recently, there was really nothing known about it other than it existed. You know, we actually had to go to North Dakota to rescue not only the game, but all this stuff. This is a really good example of, you know, history that you know, we might have lost if I hadn't flown to North Dakota. What I've come to understand is that the game itself is only part of the story. You know, you can play Super Mario Brothers. That game now, if you play it, it's a good game. That game, if you examine it within its context, was a revolutionary game. The sky being blue was kind of new. The fact that the screen scrolled to the right, like, that was revolutionary. That's context you don't get just from the game. And you can understand that by going back to these magazines and seeing how people talked about it. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, this is, this is gold. So this is um, a consumer ad for the Atari VCS from 1978. So this is still a brand new system. You know, the headline here, right? Don't, don't just watch TV tonight, play it. We, this is when people were still wrapping their heads around what video games even were. If we are to take video games seriously as an artistic medium, as something that we can study as a part of our cultural heritage, that we need access to more than just playing the game. We need to know how the company sold the game. We need to know, you know, what were the influences for the game? So what we do is identify this material, try to find it so that we can tell the story of these classic works of history, these video games. 
I want people to be able to access this stuff because I want people to be able to tell the story of video games using period sources. It hasn't paid a salary yet. I've been a volunteer for the Video Game History Foundation full-time. I still do some game development on the side. We started with a crowdfunding campaign because it's not just money that we're after. We want to build a community. We are identifying things that are volatile, that, that could disappear, that we feel are important, and saving them now, it's more than a full-time job saving history.